Hello and welcome to Sanral TV. When we think of our national roads, we often think of the highways that let commercial traffic and all us ordinary motorists get smoothly from A to B in good time. That's certainly Sanral's core responsibility, but not everyone knows the work that goes into making the functioning of our highways possible. Slope stabilization, for instance, happens for the most part out of the sight of motorists. Yet, without this work, highway journeys would not be safe and eventually the roads would simply become impossible. To get a better idea of what exactly goes into a slope stabilization project, we looked at the Sanral project on the M2 at the Kai Cuttings, where the road snakes along a mountainous path between the Great Kai River in the Eastern Cape, between the two towns of Butterworth and Komcha. Hi, I'm Leon Westhuizen. I'm the resident engineer on the Kai Cutting job. Hi, I'm Victor Silvery. Uh, working on the Kai Cuttings project as a resi assistant resident engineer. There are two types of work we're doing. One is called a passive slope and the other one is an active slope. The slope that we've got here is an active slope with all these at two, two and a half meters each, these anchors. A passive slope, you've just got over the top and at the bottom and just mesh in between. For both systems is to actually control rockfalls. So we're not trying to, we're trying to mitigate and not completely stop the rockfalls. And yes, we have the netting, which is an active mesh system. And what we do, all those anchors are called tie backs and the bottom, the bottom ones are called cable anchors and the, to, the bottom and top are called cable anchors. So they tie in together into the, into, the, into the slope and to hold everything in place and at least well, to control the rock force should, should that happen. Which is the same case with passive mesh where we don't have tie back anchors. We just have the cable anchors top and bottom and whatever falls falls into the mesh and should maintenance, maintenance be required then the, whoever is doing maintenance can come and open up the mesh and from the bottom and release and, whatever and that has fallen fall into, out the road. into the So ideally it's basically to protect the road user against uh, a rockfall. Before the team can set about stabilizing the slope, they need to understand the geology of the area. We asked about the science behind this project. So before, what you see now is the final product, but before that, the geologists would come, or geotechnical engineers with experience doing slope stabilization, would come and assess the condition of the slope. Now what we have here on the kai cuttings is mainly sandstone and mud rock, and sandstone tend to be in big boulders, of which they can fall onto the road, and mudstone erodes easier, so if, uh, if mudstone keeps on eroding, then the sandstone become in an overhang situation and they, if they fall they can end up bouncing onto the road. Once you, have, once you have assessed like that then you go into what they call geological mapping so you, wrap, you, you map your slopes depending on your cracks and joints and all of that and then you go into design where you do kinematic design to assess if a rock falls may let's say from 10 meters where is it gonna end up and from there then you'll see okay what can we use to stabilize it if it's a mesh or if it's just a catch fence or whatever not but for, for this kai cutting slope as you can see they are really close to the road we don't have enough uh, drop zone for the rocks should they come from the from the top so we just decided to go with the mesh system over an 11.8 kilometer stretch there are 31 bends and there's a 422 meter altitude drop when traveling from north to south what kind of challenges did the team experience in trying to make the slope safe the biggest problem is with the weathering. It's the wetting and drying and roots from plant growth. The roots force the rocks apart and then it will push a rock off, for instance. Now, what we have tried to do is to put what we call a crest drain to stop any water that comes down the hill coming over the the slope, let it go off on the side. Because that just adds to our problems because it gets water gets into the cracks, you get water pressure building up, and then it will push rocks off. 
big challenges, you don't have enough information. <laughs> so, so basically, as a design engineer, you come and take your photographs and all of that. But at the end of the day, it's only when you start working on site that you discover, oh, that was missed. We need to add that. We need to fix it there. We can't work as what design says. So that's the biggest challenge where uh, there's a lot of unknowns, given the fact that it's so high and, and all of that. Now, the biggest challenge with that, of having many unknowns on a project like this, is your risk in, in terms of the contractor extension of time. Because whatever that you pick up later on and was not put in the first in the in the in the, in the contract point, yeah. in the first place, then that leads to additional time. So. For any design that you do, you don't design it to last, you design it for a specific period. So for this, uh, for this slope stabilization work, the, the 100 year time period, that's what has been put forward.